Pittsburgh may look and use a timeout too. You never know if they don't like something here. Needs seven to keep it going. Here's the pass off the hands of Pascal. And the Steelers are going to win the division. Really proud of every man in the locker room, uh, regardless of role. Uh, it took everyone today. Just love the fight of the group. Victory is sweet. Uh, it's been a month or so for us, so we've been through some adversity. Uh, but there's growth in the midst of that. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Uh, we got some big battles that lie ahead, man. But today, we're humbled and honored to be AFC North champs. Hey, you know what time it is? The city of champions. Standard is a standard. It's a new year and a new season for the Pittsburgh Steelers. As the team prepares for its first postseason appearance on home soil since January of 2018, they do so with a fresh start on fresh turf. Heinz Field has recently undergone a resodding process that should help the players start off January football on the right foot. Well, we usually resod it once after our summer concerts uh, to begin the season, and then uh, we'll do a little bit around 20,000 square feet or so after about 10 football games, and then we usually do whole field after the high school games. Well, we didn't have the high school games this year, so we were able to uh, stretch it out a little bit further. So we went ahead and did it. After week 13, we knew the weather was still gonna be good and uh, we had one more regular season game and wanted to have something nice for the playoffs. Planning for the postseason is the standard, which is why the development of the sod that will be used on Sunday for the wild card game started almost a full year ago. I mean, I've start way back in the early spring, uh, actually last fall, taking a look at this grass, basically from when it's seeded, and kind of check in on the grass a couple times a year out in New Jersey at the sod farm. We usually have a couple of fields and we just pick out what's looking the best. We're taking care of those fields a little bit different than the rest of the sod farm to make sure they're ready for, uh, you know, collegiate and NFL football. It takes us about a day to uh, strip out the old field and then about two days to uh, bring in and resod a new field. This project we used 64,000 square feet, which is just shy of like an acre and a half. Usually if we sod between the hashes, we're around 20,000 square feet. And if you were to sod the whole thing, you know, track to track with all the bench area and everything, we're at about 90,000 square feet. Well, this time of year, it's harder to control the moisture here in Pittsburgh. We don't get a lot of sun. We do get a lot of wind, but not a lot of sun. Once things get wet, it's hard to dry things out. That's why we use the sod from Tucko Turf Farms because their native soil matches up so closely with a USGA uh, spec sand. We want a fast, firm, dry surface. When we have like a blank field, the first thing we normally do is we paint the lines first, but we string the side lines so we know where the lines start and stop. We want to paint the lines first and paint kind of from the inside out so we don't track over what we've already painted. And as far as the end zones and logos go, we use uh, stencils. We use a tracing pattern stencil, which is like eight mil or 10 mil plastic with holes cut in it. So we measure out, we use strings to locate exactly where the logo will go, pull the logo off and connect all the dots. After the field crew dots the I's and crosses the T's, the turf is ready for action. And the action starts with pregame warmups. Whether it's a position group doing their weekly ritual or a little friendly competition, one member of the Steelers organization has been at the center of it all for almost two decades. So on game days, approximately three hours before the game, I have my stretching routine that I take the guys through. We're superstitious and the fact of who goes in what order and what time. The warm-up session that Marcel Pastor leads the Steelers through includes a standard routine of passes, toe taps, and reaction drills. It's, uh, it's competitive and it's, it's a good way for us to get loose before the game. 
As the team's assistant strength and conditioning coach, Pastor spends a majority of his week with the players in the weight room. His Sunday routine is a departure from that, and it's one that started almost 20 years ago thanks to one of the team's all-time greats. The first year that I was here in 2001, uh, prior to the game, Heinz wanted somebody to throw with, so I just jumped in and he and I started playing catch. And it kind of evolved from Heinz to Heath to AB uh, to the DBs, and it's just kind of involved, and, and we've kind of come into a routine maybe the last four or five years. It's kind of fun, and you know what's coming and when. So for a typical pregame, the amount of throws that I'm making are probably close to three to 400. After delivering all of those passes, his next task before a game involves being on the receiving end of things as he takes on bull rushes from all-pro defensive tackle Cam Hayward. Those reps don't start, however, until one more throw is made for their pregame competition. It was uh, prior to the game one day. Um, I had two balls in my hands. We got just done throwing them with the DBs, and then I warm up Cam Hayward before the game, and he just grabbed one of the balls, and we saw uh, Carl standing, our photographer standing over by the ball bag, and Cam says, uh, closest to it uh, has to do, you know, the other person has to do 10 squats. So it was just something fun, it was something silly. Obviously, it's a very competitive nature around here, and that was probably seven or eight years ago, and now before the game, we have a little running tally that we have every year, and nobody ever had to do squats, but it was just the, the fun fact of how close to the bag can you get it. A funny story is I was an intern with the Washington football team in uh, 1998, and I, Trent Green and I were playing catch on the side, and I asked him, I was like, wouldn't this be fun if there was like a, there was like a career in football that you could be just like the warm-up guy, you could just throw it to everybody. And you know, 22 years later, I'm here just doing that, and living out a dream and having fun and going to work and we have good people and we're all in this together. And having good people on staff is just as important as having good players on the field. It's no secret Pittsburgh likes to employ people who genuinely love the game of football. You know, I love football and so do they and that, that's one thing that you can't replace in a player. They gotta love it, especially when they play linebacker. In Pittsburgh, the linebacker position has long been a focus of not only the team's defense, but of the Steelers' identity. Few understand that better than inside linebackers coach Jerry Olsowski, now in his 11th year on the Steelers' coaching staff. You know, they, they enjoy the mix-up, the exchange of contact on a play-by-play -play basis. You know, I've been lucky since I've been here. I've had first-rounders, you know, but I also have guys like Vince, who's a later round pick, or Robert, that came here, you know, through free agency. They've been playing well. They're dedicated to their craft. They listen to me, and they listen to Coach T, and I couldn't ask for anything more. Way to go! Way to go! My coaching style in general is a little unpredictable, okay, because, you know, that's the type of player I, I think I was. I was gonna be productive, and then I was gonna, you know, hit you. Olsaski grew up in Youngstown, Ohio, a blue-collar town that loves its football. He went on to play linebacker at the University of Pittsburgh and then with the Steelers for nine seasons from 1989 to 1997. Over the course of his career, he developed a reputation as both a hard worker and a hard hitter on the Blitzburg defense. I coach people how I was coached. You know, I come from Ohio, hard-nosed coaches, you know get out of the mill or get out of their first job and then they come to their second job. You know, I don't want to say I grew up rough, but you know, we, you know, we were a middle-class family. My dad had gone to college, my mom didn't, you know, she was a homemaker and, you know, we believed in tough love and, and football was a place for me where I could interact with that tough love and I could dish it out and I could take it and things like that. And, and that's how I grew up and then I was lucky you know, I went to Pitt and, you know, same blue collar ethic. It wasn't good enough for me just to get the guy to the ground. I had to hit him and, and, you know, make sure he knew who I was. I think if you go back and you ask people who played against me, they, they knew they played against Jerry Olsafs. Even in the NFL, I think that's what, that's what you got. You know, I was lucky to play with guys like Greg Lloyd who insisted on that. You know what I mean? They were going to feel us out there. 
okay? We were gonna do everything we could to win the game. That's how I expect my guys to be. Bring energy, go hard, and lay it on the line. Give everything you got. Wants to throw it, he's back. Now he checks it down and it's dropped. Is Devin okay? He kind of rolled on that far sideline and he's in discomfort. Every team deals with injuries throughout the course of an NFL season, but the Steelers were hit hard in the middle of their defense in 2020. After Devin Bush was lost for the season with a knee injury in October, Robert Spillane stepped up to fill the void. Spillane then suffered an injury himself that forced him to miss the last four games of the regular season. And to see a guy who puts in all that work and get hurt really is, you know, it's really sad. But at the same time, I have to be there for him as his coach to support him and to get him through this. You know, I've hurt uh, fingers and, you know, I had a serious knee in injury. I had a fluky wrist injury and, and I can remember looking at my leg and having a conversation saying, what did, what did I do to you? What did I ever do to my left knee that you should let me down like this? And, you know, I, I talked to Devin a little bit about the, that because you go through all these things. You really have to just kind of immerse yourself in, oh, I remember what it was like when I got hurt. What What is good for them to use, you know? And, and there's also Ulysses, you know, Ulysses had a back and, uh, you know, and I was heartbroken for him because he had played well against Tennessee. You know, when you come out on the other end and you're playing again, you're so much better as a person, as a player, because you've gone through this emotional low. That's the, the crazy nature of football. You know, any play could be your last. But that's also the, the reason that a lot of, of us love football because every play you put it on the line and, and you test yourself against another man doing the same thing. To add some depth, the Steelers traded the New York Jets for seven-year veteran Avery Williamson in November, who was more than excited to go from an 0-8 team to an undefeated team. It was pretty crazy, man. Um, you know, really wasn't, didn't know if I was going, um, if it was, anything was going to happen, but then, you know, once my agent told me that, definitely pretty surreal. And uh, I knew that I was going to, you know, an undefeated team. And, you know, just it was a lot of emotions, but, but uh, it was definitely a very exciting feeling. My room welcomes everyone, you know? And once we find out Avery is just like Vince, we're like, oh, yeah, he's about that life. You know, that's what, that's what my guys say. Are you about that life? It was easy for him to feel accepted. The terminology is different. You know, he knows how to play football, but he's had another coach talking to him about how to play football. And I said, I'm gonna trust the fact that Avery from small town Tennessee knows how to play football, and I just gotta figure out how they talk about football down in small town Tennessee, and New York Jets will meet sooner than me trying to teach him everything that I know in my language. Coming right in and taking him down at the 19-yard line. That is Avery Williamson. Williamson has quickly acclimated to being the next man up for the team's defense, and fellow linebacker Vince Williams has been a huge help to him learning the playbook. I think the interesting thing about Vince is people don't realize how intelligent he is. And Vince is also the consummate professional. You know, one offseason decided to get some pass rush ability. For an inside guy, that's, that's a remarkable feat, and that shows the professionalism of Vince. In the off season, he doesn't look back. He looks forward and says, what could I do next year? With his intelligence and just his awareness of, I want to play in the NFL a long time and I have to have a lot of different skills to get that done. What skill do I need to pick up this off season? It's really good to have Vince in here because he keeps everyone grounded and he's come from you know, you could say he's come from nothing. He didn't get invited to the combine. You know, he was at Florida State, but you know, there were other linebackers there that, that played with him that were more celebrated. But yet, you know, after, you know, seven, eight years, Vince is probably at the top of the pile of those guys who came out, you know? So that's very impressive. That's what makes him so valuable on our team is because he's just a beacon of hard work and determination to be a great NFL player. And that's what he's made himself into. 
In the playoffs, veteran leadership is crucial to helping a team prepare for the single elimination tournament, as Coach Tomlin likes to call it. Players who have been there before, like Williams, are important to leading the way on what is hopefully a long postseason run for the Steelers. We've got great leadership on our team. Uh, those guys provide servant leadership for our young guys. They give of themselves, their information, their time, their experience, and all of that aids us. But at the end of the week, man, all the talking is going to stop and it's just going to be the play, and that's how it should be. 